I'm speaking on leveling up part six. And right there, don't lose your praise. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 1 to 2. Now will I sing to my well beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard. My beloved has a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted with the choicest vine and built a tower in the midst of it. And also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes and it brought forth wild grapes. The reason why believers are in warfare is based on this scripture. He said, God is talking about us and God calls us his well beloved. In other words, I am, I am, I am the favorite of the favorite among God's favorite children. That is who you are. And he says, I will sing a song of my well-beloved. I loved you intentionally. God loves you decisively. In other words, God himself sat down, thought through, and decided that I will love, put somebody's name there, Daniel Yawenchi. What is your name? What is your name? Mm -hmm. And he says that... <laughs> My well beloved has a vineyard in a fruitful field. And he faced it. So you see, God picked you like a, a vineyard. And God put you in a fruitful field. And the Bible says, in a very fruitful hill, wherever God planted you, irrespective of the conditions that are prevalent currently, I like you to know that God has strategically planted you. The reason why there's too many warfares around your life and destiny that the enemy is doing everything to steal your joy is because you have been planted. Touch yourself and say, I am planted. I am planted. There are many of us, we do not know that we are planted. We are not sure of our planting. You know, I was trying to raise some money for somebody. It was a very important need for a member of this church. And the money was not forthcoming. I went to God and I prayed one simple straight prayer. I said, Father, you have made me a shepherd over this life. You will provide this day the money that is needed because I gave this person a promise that the children's school fees will, not, will be paid this week. And so I cannot go back and say, I do not have the money. That day, God exceeded the budget. The reason is because I understood my positioning and placement as a planting of God. You see, the reason why the enemy fights is because he wants you to second guess who you are, sir. He wants you to doubt your positioning in God. Am I communicating at all? And so he bombards your spirit with all sorts of rubbish. And sometimes he terrorizes you in dreams and visions. So that in the end, you will lose focus of who you are. And you lose focus of who you are. There's a difference between whose and who. Whose means that you have an owner. Who you are means you have an identity. They are not the same. And the devil, when he's coming against you, the first point, he will come against you, will be whose you are. John Newton, in his song, he said, Be gone, unbelief. My Savior is near. And for my relief, will surely appear. He says, by prayer, let me wrestle. And he will perform. 
with Christ in the vessel, I smile at the storm. Brothers, it is not like, like, like I'm saying that hide your head in the sand and pretend as if things are not working. He says, I look at the storm and the enemy's ploy is to position me in a place where I no more have faith to hold on. I no more have the capacity to see beyond where I am. But he says, I understand that Christ is in this vessel. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I know who is with me. He says, though that be my way, since he is my guide, tis mine to obey, tis his to provide. He says, though systems be broken and creatures all fail, the word he has spoken will surely prevail. He says this, his love in time past forbid me to think he will leave me at last in trouble to sink. What a word. Father says, says, listen to me. Our God, he will never, he will never, he will never, he will never ever leave any of us in times of trouble. His love for us in time past should always be a reminder that the same God who saw us through, he will see us through. Why? Because sometimes in times of trouble, the enemy will let you question God's love for you. You will question God's love towards you. You will question whether God really loves you or he does not. I saw my son with his wife and baby. And I remember there was a time that what to eat was even a problem for this my son now. Difficult times for him. He had a father to take care of. He had a sister. And this boy was really not working. Today he owns two businesses, one in UK, one in Ghana. You see, you see, see, God's original intent for us, he pre-planned it before we are born. And so he's not moved by the things we go through. And all he wants is that we will just do our part and trust him to provide his part. I came to tell you, don't lose your praise. Don't let the enemy let you focus on the trouble and think that this will be your end. This shall never ever be your end. Psalm 92 verse 13 to 14 says, Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. Brothers and sisters, there's so much God has done for us. But most of the time, our temporal suffocates us from praising God. It's over case our praise. Our temporal negative experiences, the things that have not yet gone through, it drains all the energy from us from praising God. But I'd like you to know. God deserves all our praise. No matter what we go through. You see, we must level up by not losing our praise. There's a point in your Christian life where you don't have to praise God because everything is working. But you praise God in anticipation of what God can do. You praise God in anticipation of what God can do. But sometimes you praise God because of what he has done in the past. John Newton said, his love in the past forbids me to say that he will leave me in times of trouble. He says that we shall, we shall bring forth fruit in old age and they shall be fat and flourishing. How did they, we get there? He says they that are planted in the courts of our God. Are you planted? Are you planted? Sir, so tell yourself I'm planted. Oh. Tell yourself I can't easily be moved like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. The worldly song says, Some things should not bother you. Sometimes you sleep and you have all sorts of dreams. And when you wake up, it looks like your strength is sapped. Brother, and he said, Yo, God is the provider of your destiny. In the days where you don't know how far, praise God. Someone say, It's time to praise God. 
so the Bible tells us in 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 James chapter 4 verse 7 that submit yourself therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee from you you see until you come to a point where you have totally submitted submitted means that let it go out of your hand to submit a document means that you release it and another person receives so God is saying submit it means that yourself means everything that is connected to your life you relinquish its control into the hands of God you see most of the time we can't praise God because we have not yet relinquished certain areas of our life's control unto God it is time to believe God for big things by relinquishing their control unto him God if you don't help me nobody can help me so in Psalm 86 verse 1 it says let God arise let his enemies be scattered watch this first you relinquish the control and then you allow God to arise in other words see trust his timing trust his activities he says let God arise and let his enemies be scattered he says, let them also that hate him flee before him. But God must first arise. That's why you submit to God. Brothers and sisters, the reason why you praise God is because the Bible tells us that when, when our praises go up, his glory comes up. In other words, when you start praising God, God gets up from his seat and comes to wonder, hello, Kwame, is everything okay? That is what God always wants. He wants you to create an enabling environment so that he can come and have fellowship with you. And the enabling environment, you create it through your praise. You create it when you begin to talk about the goodness of God in the midst of your difficulty. Can I tell all of you something? Let me show you one of the biggest secrets to secure blessings. Whenever things are tough for you, or people have insulted you, or you have lost a loved one, that day, when everybody is crying, when it looks like all hope is lost, I'd like you to go into a room. This is my greatest secret. But I love you, so I'm teaching you. If you don't use it, you're on your own. Go into a room. Lock the room. And begin to praise God. Listen to me. Don't lose your praise in the midst of loss or difficulty. Go into that room and begin to praise God. Begin to thank God and say, God, I would not cry for the devil to think he's winning. I would praise you, my God, because you are a good God. You begin to think of what God can do. You begin to tell God of what he has done. You begin to say unto the Lord what you believe he is able to do. And I can promise you, by the time you come out of that room, something will shift. A lady lost his father. His father was a pastor. They had gone to somewhere to go and pray. They went for waiting because the father was sick. So he went with his mother. The, the pastor and his wife, two pastors, went for waiting. The day the man got back from the waiting, when he entered into the house, ish, 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 they rushed him to the hospital and he was dead. The daughters were wondering, ah, didn't our parents just came back from a fasting? Why should my father die? They went to cry unto God because of the, of the sickness. Now that they came back after many days of fasting, 7 or 14 or 21 days, my father should die. Where is God? And the lady had already miscarried. So she called me, Pastor Dan. I said, sister, you want to first go and be with your husband? Oh yeah? He said, mm. I said, you want a child? He said, oh yeah. I said, you want staying permit in America? He said, mm. I said, let me show you what to do. Before, my condolence, the secret is go into your room right now. I say it is your best moment. Go into the room and start dancing. Start praising God that God. The Bible says that you are the father of the fatherless. Now that you have become my father, Lord, reposition me to be with my As I go, give me many, many children. As give me a job. Do you know what happened? Number one, after the burial, the man who had been looking for visa for the wife that he was not getting the door opened immediately. She went. KPMG transferred the lady from Ghana to American branch to work with KPMG. She went and bah, she got pregnant. Again, bah. she has two or three children now. When the enemy comes against you and you don't lose your praise, 
you enter into what we call the victor's crown you enter into what the victor's crown he puts a crown of honor on your head because you did not lose your praise And so Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 to 2 says, But now that says the Lord that created you, O Jacob, and he that formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom. Ethiopia and Sibia, Seba, for you, for thee. You see, being a Christian does not exempt us from warfare. It only gives us an edge over the opposition. Why? Why? First John 5 verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. All I'm teaching you is that what gives you the overcomer's grace, or what we call the victor's crown, is your faith in the midst of difficulties if you don't lose your praise if you don't lose your faith if you don't lose focus of who you are who you are and who is with you I can promise you you will secure the victor's cross therefore Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 to 16 says therefore for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmity but was in all point tempted like as we are yet without sin let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need he begins by saying for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity but was in all points tempted like we are yet with us let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace why are we coming God is saying, the reason why you come is not because you have not felt the pain. You come not because there's no feeling of infirmity. But you come not because you are strong. You come in your weakness, but you come to the, his throne of grace. Why, why, why am I there? Why am I at the throne of grace? What am I doing in his presence? What am I doing there? What am I doing there? Because I understand this truth. Psalm 127 verse 1 says, Except the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen wake but in vain. Yeah, Psalm 127 verse 1. So the reason why I have come to the throne of grace is because I understand that except the Lord watches the house, except the Lord builds the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen wake, wake it, but in vain. That's why I've come to the throne of grace. That's why in my weakness, I've come to God. In my weakness, I've come to God because I recognize his place. I recognize what he can do. I recognize who I am. I recognize who is with me. I recognize that there's enough grace for every situation that I find myself in. And because I lack the vocabulary to ask for the right kind of grace, I come into his presence with dancing, with praises, because I know whom I have believed. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. The Bible says in Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consume we need to recognize this is why i've come to god i've come to him because i know that his mercy he says we should come into the throne room of grace where would we might find grace to help in time i know in the throne of god's house there is mercy and that mercy is the reason why i will not be consumed the situation will not get to me the situation will not have finality in my life i will wear the victor's crown I will prevail irrespective of the difficulties and the circumstances and how long it has delayed. I know whom I believed. 
Say, I know whom I believe. One more time, shout, I know whom I believe. Hallelujah. Praise him, the Lord, somebody. Where are we? Mm. Yeah. He says, for whatsoever is born of God, overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Someone say, it's my faith. So why is God saying that the Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him? Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 to 25. He says what? Let me start from verse 22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. He says, the Lord is my portion. He says, say yet who? Say yet who? He says, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto me. Oh, me can scripture say na say no no me. The Lord is you see, sometimes you need to quiet yourself and tell yourself that the Lord is good unto me. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him to the soul that seeketh him the Lord is good okay? that's what somebody sang a song and said the Lord is good I will lift him up higher everywhere I go I will lift him up okay? God knows how to defend you God knows how to help you God knows how to transform your story and give you a better story. Amen. He's a good, good father. Is who you are. Is who you are. And I'm loved by him. Hallelujah. You see, that's why Psalm 16 verse 7 says, That will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forever. That will show me. You see, when you come to the place of praising God, God will begin to show you the path of life. When you start praising him, what to do, how to go about it, Only God will only show you when you start praising. That's why you don't have to lose your voice. You see, it's a certain disposition, a certain understanding that you need. He says, you are the one I love. I don't have any other lover more than you. You see, can you go to God and sing to God like that? Do you know when Christians thrive, it is in the midst of difficulty. But we have so focused on demons that instead of us walking by faith, we are walking by emotions. The Bible says, and so we tend to the stronghold of praise. He says, that will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. In other words, when I come into God's presence, when I enter into the throne room of grace, that is the place. <laughs> I quoted, I quoted, I quoted Psalm 16, verse 11. He says, But thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I'm building on the scriptures, scripture upon scripture. You see, so when I come into the throne room of grace, I am in God's presence. I understand that in God's presence, there's fullness of joy. And so because I recognize that in God's presence, there's fullness of joy, I come to the place of praise. How do I tend to the stronghold of praise? He says, Zachariah 9, 12. Turn you! To the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. Kaduski Fala Hadai. So when I come into God, he says, Turn ye. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope. So I am a prisoner of hope. I've entered into God's presence with a hope anticipation that my God will do it. I love some song. Guns will sing. They say, Enele Coco. Enele koko, enele koko, enele koko. Eke Yesu bafe, Yesu bafe, Yesu bafe. Oh, for those of you who don't understand this, this, this prophetic song, he says this one. And it's easy. My God will do it. 
See, when you come to the place of praise, you are praising God because you know that this one, this one, this one, this one, na easy one, this one, na easy one. You see, there are many of us we don't know. And so we struggle. We, we try to reason out how God will do it. But I like you to know that when it comes to your God, he's like an iron chef. Whatever you give him, he can turn it into a delicious meal. Your God, that's why he says all things will work together for your good. Because I am with you always. To the ends of the earth. This one is easy. So I must understand why am I praising him? Why am I praising him? Second Peter chapter 3 verse number 9. Why am I praising God? Why am I praising him? He says this. Second Peter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. But is long suffering to us what? Not willing that any should perish. But that all should come in repentance. So the reason why I'm praising God is because my God is not slack concerning his promise. Please, are you, are you getting me? Yes. My God is not slack concerning his promise. So, when I used to go to Pentecost, we used to sing a song. Kunim, kunim, kunim. Kunim wo mocha ni mo. Yet your time for nesu. Psalm 47, verse 6 to 7. He says, Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praise unto our King. Sing praises for God is the King of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. In other words, when you are praising God, understand why. Don't just come because sovereigns want to on your town's little be. I will sing and praise your name. I'm giving you my whole life. I do not control the situations for which I find myself in. I might have brought myself into it, but I serve a true living God. And as I've come to you, Lord, I submit my life wholly. Yes, I made mistakes. And they advised me I did not listen, but here am I. God, I will praise you because I know what you can do for my life. Is it a good word? You see, when you come to the place of praise, the enemy will try to remind you of the past. Remind you of things you have no control over. But the Bible tells us in Isaiah 43 verse 18 to 19, that remember ye not the former things. He says, neither consider the things of old. He says, do not consider the things of old. He said, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. These people have I formed for myself. They shall show forth my praise. That's why I'm praising God. I'm praising from a place of understanding. He says I should not consider the past. There I have or I don't have is not important. He says I should praise him. I'm praising God not because I have all my acts together but I'm praising him because he has told me I shouldn't consider the things of the past. You know pastor this year has not been a good year. Sir consider not the things of the past. Pastor you know every man that comes into my life they break my heart. Consider not the things of the past. Are you, are you getting me? He said, all deals are being closed because of MPP. Consider not the things of the past. Pastor, they said that as for we Votarians, we won't get a job because it's MPP who is in power. Consider not the things of the past. Oh, Pastor, oh, very soon MPP will be out of power and I don't know how will I eat. Consider not the things of the past. Why? He said, behold, I do anything. He says, and even if you find yourself in a desert, I provide water in the desert. What a God I serve. And so, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 4 says, For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. Ha! 
For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Now look at me. God is saying, when you come into the throne of grace, remember that you are joined to the living. And because you are joined to the living, there is hope for you. Papa, there is hope. When you are in the throne of grace, the reason why he says come to the throne of grace, he says because he that is joined to the living, there is hope. As long as you are connected to the living God, in a living world, he will provide living things to supply your need. I serve a miracle working God. There is nothing to add for him when he speaks. I serve when he speaks. He works signs and wonders. I serve a miracle. So when I am connected to God, I know whom I have believed. So the scripture says, in Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. See the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. God says, I will give you. The end is the one you'll be expecting. It may not come like the way you want it, but you'll get it. One day, one of my daughters called me. I was very disturbed about some situation that was developing. I said, this one, it will scatter. Don't worry. I came to thank God that it has scattered. Oh, it was, ah, because God will not preside over stupidity. He will scatter it. He will do all. And I went, um, one of my daughters came to see me. We're praying about something. Somebody is just misbehaving towards my daughter, and the thing is disturbed my daughter, and they were supposed to go to court. I said, Let's lift prayer. We said, Prayer, and said, Let the lawyer abandon him. <laughs> they went to court. The lawyer abandoned his client. He said, Your Honor, please, I have another case. I want to go. Huh. They, they're talking, it was a judge who was asking, no objection. He says, no objection, sir. That is when, when, when your own lawyer abandons you. See, I'm telling you that in the place of prayer, you can, if you praise God, your adversary's strength will abandon them. Amen. The strength of your adversary, they will abandon them. Amen. You need to trust God. Whenever you are going through difficulties, I'll give you my last scripture and I'll close. Psalm 103, verse 1 to 3. He says, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his name. He said, Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits. There are many of us, we forget that there's a benefit in serving God. It is the blood that has brought victory to me. Brothers and sisters, stop hating people and being vindictive. They are not your focus. Hey, let demons gather. God knows how to lift you. Amen. Let all the witches in your family gather. God knows how to get you out. You see, the devil comes in as an angel of light. And sometimes, he does everything for us to forget whose we are. But the psalmist says, Psalm 103, put it there. Forget not. Someone say, I won't forget. I won't forget. He said, forget not. Verse th- forget not all his benefit. Verse 3. He said, who forgiveth all thy iniquity? So no matter what sin you have committed, he forgives you. He doesn't remember. You cause abortion. You cause what? You, you, you slept with who? You slept with the Pope. God will forgive you. He said, who forgiveth all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? You see, iniquity is hidden sin. How many of you know that all of us, there are some sins we have committed we don't want anybody to know? Yes, I am the chief sinner in all those sins. The Bible says, even the one that is hidden that nobody knows, the one that you can't open your mouth to, to confess in public, God forgives you. He says, who healeth all thy disease? Next verse, oh yeah, who redeemed thy life from this? He said, it is a benefit by your association with God that he redeemed thy life 
from destruction. He said, who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. In other words, me nam hono, me shahin chebi, and your loving kindness and tender mercy. He crowns me with it. Next verse. Who satisfies your mouth with good things? In the end, you will not say a negative thing. It shall be only good things. It shall be only hot. Good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Now look at it. And I've read this scripture until this moment. I'm understanding it differently. Sir, he says your youth is renewed like the eagles. Do you know when the eagle strength is renewed? It is when he's old and his feathers had outgrown and is big and he had plucked everything and had beaten his talons on a stone that the talons has been broken. Then in those lonely moments where else he's on the cliff of the rock, in that place of vulnerability, his strength starts f- renewing. He begins to develop new wings so that he can fly. What God is saying to you and I is irrespective of what we go through, when we even feel vulnerable, the Bible says that God is able to renew our strength so that we now begin to feel youthful again. In other words, our energies are resuscitated. It means that it means that our drive, our vision is clearer. It means we can go further faster. I pray for somebody in this place that you will not lose your praise, that you will not lose your praise, that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. See, I see all sorts of beautiful flowers all over this place. The glory of God is in this house. The glory of God is in wherever you're listening to me. Your strength is being renewed. 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 renewed. Somebody shout, my strength is renewed. And I'd like you to close your eyes and pray. I don't know which of the word bless you. I pray unto God. Stand to your feet, everybody. Pray unto God concerning what you heard. What decisions are you making from this sermon that was preached? What decision? Lord, I won't lose my praise. Lord, I will focus on your word. Lord, I will dwell in your presence. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory. In your presence. I thank you. Everybody pray. Holy Spirit of God, I thank you. I won't lose my praise. I am joined to the living. Therefore, there is hope.